Lara Cabral, David Omedita, Elson Jones. We are Group 7 of 3 IEA, and we are here to present the Chapter 15 and 16, Fundamentals of Metal Forming and Bulking Processes. So I'm going to discuss to you Chapter 15, The Fundamentals of Metal Forming. It is essential to have a reasonable understanding of available techniques for shape production and their features in order to select the best method to make a given product. To expand our study, we will need to consider deformation processes. Nearly all metal products undergo metal deformation at some stage of their manufacture through the process of rolling, cast, cast ingots, ingot strands, and slabs are reduced in size and converted into basic forms such as sheets, rods, plates, or structural shapes such as l beams Deformation may be bulk flow in three dimensions such as simple shearing, simple compound bending, or complex combinations of these. Stresses producing these deformations can be tension, compression, and shear. For most of these processes, a wide range of speed, temperature, tolerances, surface finishes, and amounts of deformation are possible. Forming processes, the independent variables, are those aspects of process over which the engineer or operator has direct control. They are generally selected or specified during setup. Some of the independent variables are starting material, starting geometry of the workpiece, tool or die geometry, lubrication, starting temperature, speed of operation, and amount of deformation. The starting material, uh, we need to define the initial properties and characteristics such as the chemistry of that material and its condition. It is important to specify the starting material to achieve the required final properties upon completion of its deformation process. Second is the starting geometry of the workpiece. The starting geometry of the workpiece may be dictated by previous processing or it may be selected from a variety of available shapes. Next is the tool or die geometry. Tooling will induce and control the metal flow as the material goes from starting shape to its finished product. Success or failure of the process often depends on tool geometry. Lubrication. It, this acts as coolants, thermal barriers, corrosion inhibitors, and particle compounds. Their selection is an important aspect in the success of a forming operation. Specification includes types of lubricant, amount to be applied, and the method of application. Next is the starting temperature. Temperature selection and control are often key to the success of fa or failure of a metal forming operation. Specification of starting temperature may include the temperatures of both the workpiece and the tooling. Next is the speed of operation. Speed can directly influence the forces required for the deformation, the lubricant effectiveness, time available for heat transfer, and its selection affects far more than just the production rate. Last is the amount of deformation. While some processes control this variable through the design of tooling, others such as rolling may permit its adjustment at the discretion of the operator. Next is the dependent variables of the forming processes. These are the second set of features in which are the consequences of the independent variables. Examples are force or power requirements, material pro properties of the product, exit or final temperature, surface finish and precision, and the, natural, and the nature of the material flow. The force or power requirements. These are a certain amount of force or power is required to convert a selected material from the starting shape to its final stage with the specified lubricant, tooling geometry and speed, and starting temperature. Material properties of the product. While we can easily specify the properties of the starting material, the combined effects of deformation and the temperatures experienced during forming will certainly change them. It is important to know, therefore, how the initial properties will be altered by the shape-producing process. Next, the exit or final temperature. 
the properties of an engineering material can be altered by both the, me the mechanical and ther thermal aspects of the deformation process. Therefore, it is important to know and control the temperature of the material throughout the deformation. Next, the surface finish and precision. The surface finish and dimensional precision of the resultant product depend on the specific details of the forming process. Last, the nature of the material flow. In deformation processes, dyes or tooling generally exert forces or pressure and control the movement of the external forces of the workpiece. While the objective of an operation is the production of the desired shape, the internal flow of a material may actually be of equal importance. The independent and dependent relationships. Independent variables are those aspects of the process for which control is direct and immediate. On the other hand, the dependent variables are those aspects for which control is entirely indirect. To change a dependent variable, we must determine which independent variable is to be changed. To make changes in the variables, it is important to develop an understanding of the independent variable, dependent variable interrelations. So, we can gain information on the interdependencies of both variables in three distinct ways. The experience, ex experiment, and process modeling. So, in experience, this generally, generally requires a long time exposure to a process and is often limited to the specific materials, equipment, and products encountered during past contact. A single change in an area such as material, temperature, speed, or lubricant may, ma may make the bulk of past experience irrelevant. Experiment Direct experiment can be both time-consuming and costly. The most valid experiment is when conducted under full size and full speed production conditions. Last is the process model modeling. The process is approached through high speed computing and one or more ma mathematical models. Various models may incorporate strain hardening, thermal, thermal softening, heat transfer, and other phenomena. Process models can also serve as laboratory tools to explore new ideas or new products. Process modeling often reveals features that might otherwise go unnoticed. It is also useful when attempting to prevent or eliminate defects, optimize performance, or extend a process into a previously unknown area. The general parameters. It is extremely important to characterize the material being deformed. This, it includes the strength or res resistance to deformation, the speed of deformation, amount of prior straining, formability limits, conditions of anticipated fracture, the effect of temperature, to what extent does the material strain harden, the recrystallization kinetics, and the reaction of the material with various environment and lubricants. Another general parameter is the speed of deformation and the various related effects. For these se speed sensitive materials, more energy is needed to, to produce the same result if we wish to do it faster and stronger, tools may be required. Speed sensitivity is also greatest when the material is at elevated temperature, a condition that is frequently encountered in metal forming operations. Faster speeds also reduce the time for heat transfer and cooling. Other general parameters include friction and lubrication. We all know that friction is the resistance to sliding on long interfaces. Friction conditions depend on a number of variables including contact area, contact pre pressure, surface finish, speed, lubricant, and temperature. Production rates, tool design, tool wear, and process optimization all depend on the ability to determine and control friction between the tool and the workpiece. Lubricant selection depends on factors such as the finish of both surfaces, the area of contact, the applied load, the speed, the temperature, and the amount of lubricant. Changes in lubrication can alter the mode of material flow during forming, create or eliminate defects, alter the surface finish and the dimensional precision of the product, and modify product properties. These are the general types of lubricants. Straight oils. These are petroleum-based compounds that are easy to apply and offer good corrosion protection, but they can be difficult to clean. 
Next is water-soluble oils or emulsions. These are easier to clean but compromise on corrosion and long-term product stability. Synthetic lubricants. These are water-based and free of petroleum. Semi-synthetics. These are a blend of water, petroleum oils, and emulsifiers. Dry film lubricants. These are often composed of soaps or polymers that are applied in aqueous forms and dried before the forming operation. Last is the chemically bonded agents. These include plated coatings or products that form by chemical reaction with the workers. Hydrodynamic lubrication. This is also called fluid film, thick film, or flooded lubrication that is interposed between the surface of bodies in relative motion. This is prevalent in journal and th thrust variants. Tribology is the study of the application of the principles of friction, lubrication, and wear. Temperature constraints. In metal working operations, workpiece temperature can be one of the most important process variables. In general, an increase in temperature brings about a decrease in strength, an increase in ductility, and a decrease in the rate of strain hardening. All effects that would tend to promote ease of deformation. Forming processes tend to be classified as hot working, cold working, and warm working, based on both the temperature and the material being formed. In hot working, the deformation is performed under conditions of temperature and strain rate where the crystallization occurs is simultaneously with the deformation. The temperature of deformation is usually in excess of 0.6 times the melting point of the material on an absolute temperature scale. Cold working is deformation under conditions where the recovery processes are not active. Here, the working temperatures are usually less than 0.3 times the workpiece melting temperature. These are the advantages of cold working. 1. No heating is required. Better surface finish is obtained. Superior dimensional control is achieved because the tooling set dimensions at room temperature. 4. Product possesses better product reproducibility and interchangeability. Strength, fatigue, fatigue, and wear properties are all improved through strain hardening. Directional properties can be imparted and the contamination problems are minimized. On the other hand, this, the disadvantages are higher forces are required to initiate and complete the deformation, heavier and more powerful equipment are, are, and stronger tooling are required, less ductility is available, metal surface must be clean and scale free, intermediate annuals may be required to compensate for the loss of ductility that accompanies strain hardening. The imparted directional properties may be detrimental, and lastly, undesirable res residual stresses may, may be produced. Warm working. Deformations are produced at temperatures intermediate to hot and cold forming. Compared to cold working, warm working offers the advantages of reduced loads on the tooling and equipment increased material ductility, and the possible reduction in the number of annuals due, due to a reduction in the amount of strain hardening. Compared to hot working, the lower temperatures of warm working produce less scaling and decarburization and, and enable production of products with better dimensional precision and smoother surfaces. Isothermal forming. To successfully deform such temperature and sensitive materials, deformation has to be performed under isothermal forming conditions. The dyes or tooling must be heated to the same temperature as the workpiece, sacrificing dye life for product quality. Deformation speed must be slowed so that any heat generated by deformation can be removed in a manner that would maintain a uniform and constant temperature. Last is the form formability. It is the ability of a given metal workpiece to undergo the plastic deformation without being damaged. All of the independent variables, including the part design, dye design, lubrication, speed of deformation, material temperature, dye or tooling temperature, and even the specific operator can have a significant effect on the observed formability.
So, morning, good afternoon. We're here to discuss about chapter 16, which is the bulk forming process. Uh, brief introduction. Shaping of metal by deformation is as old as recorded history. Metal forging was practiced long before written records. Processes such as rolling, wire drawing, were common in the Middle Ages and probably date back much further. Although the basic concepts of many forging processes may remain largely, the details and equipment have evolved considerably. Manual processes was replaced by bigger, faster, and more powerful machine processes. Most recently, computer-controlled automated operations have become the new norm. So metal working consists of deformation processes in like a metal sheet, in like a metal plate, which is called a billet, billet, or blank, is shaped by two or dice. So the design and control of such process depends on the characteristics of the metal itself. The conditions of the workpiece or the tools and the mechanics of the plastic deformation. So, classification of deformation processes. Uh, there are primary processes, secondary processes to which deformation begins. So, the first, the metal, gagawin mo muna siyang, ikakast mo muna siya ito ang material na may defined shape, such as a slab, plate, or billets. Billets. Secondary process, further convert these shapes into finished or semi-finished products. So, yun yung part na parang na-convert na siya. So, kumbaga, yung primary processes, yun yung input mo, yung output mo naman, yung magiging secondary process. So, we're here to talk about uh, deformation processes. And this chapter will utilize a division that focuses on the size, the shape of the workpiece, and how the size is shaped, how the size or shape is changed. Okay, so let's go to the types of processes here. There are rolling, forging, extrusion, wire rod and tube drawing, cold forming, cold forging and impact extrusion, piercing and other squeezing processes. In continuous flow processes such as forging, the size and shape are continually changing and the process analysis must reflect this change. In the bulk forming processes, the primary deformation stress is compression. So, we know compression, uh, just like in mechanics. This may be applied directly by tools or dies that squeeze the workpiece of indirectly, as in wire drawing, where the workpiece is pulled in tension. So, tension naman. So, the forces is away from the body. Pagadan. Because in compression, pagadan. Yes, naman. Uh, but the resisting die generates compression in the region undergoing deformation. So, Dito, take topic niya na sa processes na deformation, meron ng compression at tension ng okay, So, rolling. Rolling operations reduce the thickness or change the change of the cross section of a material through compressive forces exerted by rolls. It is the first process that is used to convert a material into a finished rod product. Thick starting stock can be rolled into blooms delays or slabs, or these shapes can be obtained directly from continuous casting. So, sa rolling, kunyari, meron ka ng metallic plate. Yung metallic plate na yun, papasok sa isang roller. Pag pumasok sa isang roller, mag-change yung shape ng plate. Try to imagine na lang. Tapos, pag nagpumasok na siya dun, but it deform yung shape niya. Kung sakaling makapal yung metal plate mo, pagpasok na sa roller, ang output niya na lalabas is mas manipis. Okay. So, ang nangyayari doon, meron kasi ng frictional force na nag act sa direction ng metal plate. So, if yung plate papunta dito, kasi yung roller pa ganun, and yung direction nun at the, at the start, same lang sa direction ng metal plate. Next naman, Kapag nasa lab, kasi meron niya naman stages eh, parang parts. May, may explain further to sa video na mapakita ko sa inyo. So. To understand the concept of rolling, let us consider a metal piece. And pass it through two rollers rotating in opposite directions. The speeds of both these rollers are uniform and equal. When we insert the metal plate between the rollers, we see that the rollers squeeze the plate as they pass through them, transforming it to a sheet by decreasing its thickness and increasing its length. 
During this process, grains present in the metal plate get elongated. Now let us focus on the area of contact of the plate and the rollers. For better analyzing, let us divide this area into two parts, part 1 and 2 as shown. Let us assume the velocity of rollers B, VR, and the velocity with which the metal plate enters and exits B, V0 and VF respectively. We see that the metal first travels at a slow speed and then gains speed as it passes through the rollers. That is, V0 is smaller and VF is greater than VR. Thus, the velocity distribution curve can be drawn as in the first part, frictional force acts in the direction of the metal sheet. While in the second part, frictional force acts in the reverse direction. At the interface of these two parts, speed of the metal plate is equal to the speed of rollers. This point is known as no-slip point. Here the metal plate changes to sheet with increased length and decreased thickness with the help of rollers. Thus the process of compressing a metal between two rotating rolls for reducing its thickness and increasing its length is called as rolling. Mathematically, the rolling power required per roll is given as where F is the roll force, L is the roll strip contact length and N is the speed of roll. Manufacture of railway tracks is the most common application of rolling. Note that the angle subtended at the center of the roll by the roll strip contact length is called angle of contact or maximum angle of bite. Related terms are So, dito sa figure na to, nakikita nyo na yung slab, looms, and belay. Ito yung mga types ng metal plates. So, ang ginagawa ng roller, ito, yan, mga roller yan, binabago nila yung shape. So, kunyari, dito, madadaan siya dito sa, ang slabs, madadaan sa plates, mag, pwede siya maging scalp, pwede siya maging tube, Yan yung finished products nila. So, yun yung ginagawa ng rolling. So, uh, metal is passed between two rolls that rotate in opposite direction. The gap between the rolls being somewhat less than the thickness of entering metal. Because the rolls rotate with a surface velocity that exceeds the speed of the incoming metal, friction along the contract interface acts to propel to met the metal forward. It is squeezed, then elongated. So dito, mapasok yung metal sa roller. Paglabas niya, pwede deform siya. Kaya meron mga deform grains. Tapos, meron dyan friction na nagpokontradict sa flow ng metal. So kaya siya na rin shape. So meron tayo ng hot rolling and cold rolling. In hot rolling, the starting material should be heated to, to a uniform elevated temperature. So the deformation is also uniform. So, Para maging uniform yung material na gusto mong magawa, dapat yung heat niya, yung temperature niya, nasa uniform din para medyo perfect yung mangyari. Uh, cracking interior of the surface may result as the hotter, weaker interior tries to deform. A finishing temperature ensures the production of a uniform grain size and prevents the possibility of unwanted strain hardening. Then, cold rolling can be used to produce sheet, strip, bar, and rod products with extremely smooth surfaces and accurate dimensions. Their yield points are higher, properties have become directional, and ductility has to be stopped. A too high reversing mill permits back and forth rolling, but the rolling must be stopped, reversed, and brought back to rolling speed between each pass. Types of rolling configuration of the tire. A three high mill eliminates the need for roll reversal but requires some form of elevator on each side of the mill to raise or lower the material and the mechanical manipulators to turn or shift the product between passes. Four high and cluster arrangement use backup rolls to support the smaller work rolls. Pack rolling is a process where two or more layers of metal roll simultaneously as means of providing a thicker input material. So, Smaller di diameter rolls produce less length of the give contact given reduction and require less force to produce a given change in shape. Smaller cross sections provide a reduced stiffness. 
rolls may be prone to flex elastically because they are only supported on the ends. So, this is what happens in a roll configuration. You steal by upper roll, by lower roll, para kanina. Uh, meron ng high non reversing, meron ng high reversing. Ito basically yung directions niya. Iba. Sa iba yung directions niya sa high, sa cluster, marami naman sila. Different types of roll configuration. So, continuous or tandem rolling wheels. Billets, billet, blooms and slabs are heated and fed through an integrated series of non reversing rolling mills. Synchronization of rollers may pose issues. Characteristics, quality, and position of rolled products. Hot rolled products have little directionality in their properties. Hot rolled products are therefore uniform and have dependable quantity. Surfaces may be rough or may have a surface oxide known as mill scale. Dimensional tolerances vary with the kind of metal inside of the product. Cold rolled products exhibit superior surface finish and dimensional precision. So usually, na, naka depende naman to sa material na gagamitin mo para para maging precise yung rolled products. Para malaman mo na maganda yung quality, yun dapat maganda rin yung material mo. Tapos maganda rin yung syempre yung mechanics or yung process na naginawa mo. Tapos dapat uniform and dependable yung quality. So ring rolling. One roll is placed through the hole of a thick walled ring and the second process on the outside. Produces, a seam, produces seamless rings. Circumferential grain orientation and is used in rockets, turbines, airplanes, pressure vessels, and pipelines. So this is an example of a ring rolling process. So, dito, like it, gagawa, ang magiging output naman niya is parang ring. So dito, yung roller, Tapos, ang kalabasan niya, uh, well, kalabasan niya is a seamless ring. Tapos, ito na mga rings ito ginagamit siya sa mga rockets and other equipment, usually for uh, airplanes and rockets. Rollers must be evenly spaced throughout for perfectly flat pieces to be produced. Sometimes, this variation in roller flatness may be desired. Thermomechanical processing and controlled rolling. Thermomechanical processing, of which controlled rolling consists of integrating the formation and thermal processing into a single process that will produce not only the desired shape but also the desired properties such as strength and toughness. Computer controlled facilities are an absolutely absolute necessity if thermomechanical processing is to be successfully performed. The benefits of thermomechanical processing includes improved product properties such as substantial energy savings and the possible substitution of a cheaper, less alloyed metal for a highly alloyed one that responds to heat treatment. Processes that include plastic deformation through localized compressive forces applied through dyes. So we'll move to the next which is forging. Uh, it is one of the oldest uh, metal working process. Parts can range in size. There are three method methods. You can use growing, upset, squeezed in closed compression dies. So sa forging, uh, siguro alam may idea naman kayo kung ano yung forging, di ba? Yun yung parang sa blacksmith. Parang nag-forge ng metal, gagawin mo ng sword or something. Parang ganun yun. Pero ngayon, syempre, revolutionized na yung industry natin. Tapos nasa industry 4.0 na tayo. Medyo complex na. So, open die hammer forging. Same type of forging done by the blacksmith of old, but massive mechanical equipment is used. An impact is delivered by some type of mechanical hammer. There's a gravity drop hammer, where a free-falling ram strikes the workpiece, and the energy of the blow is varied by adjusting the height of the drop. Computer-controlled hammers can provide blows of different impact for different products, or each carry strategy of a given operation. So, ito yung picture na open die forging, hammer forging. So, may height siya, na specific height. If nakadepende sa product na gagawin mo, yung height na na i-adjust para sa hammer. Kasi, da, syempre, mas mataas yung 
yung ano, mas malakas yung impact. Kung mas matas yung hammer, mas malakas yung impact. So ito naman yung parts niya. May workpiece, frame, hammer, upper die, lower die, piston rod, and cylinder. So, open die forging. In this figure, you can see at the top part that the illustration of the unrestrained flow of material in open die forging. Note that the barrel shape that forms due to the friction between the die and the material, which is found here in the middle, and then open die forging of a multi diameter shaft, where you can see at the bottom. Forging of a seamless ring by open die method. Okay, so this is the first part, medyo sina shape siya. Tapos yung next naman, ginagawa siya na parang shaft. Ta tapos after nun, parang uh, i-re-reduce yung size niya. Nilipis siya, yung kalabasan. Uh, next, impression die hammer forging. This is more practical for a larger scale production. The dies are shaped to control the flow of metal. Upper piece attaches to the hammer and the lower piece to the anvil. Metal flows and completely fills the die. So in this figure, schemat schematic of the impression die forging process showing partial die filling and the beginning of flash formation in the center sketch and the final shape with flash in the right hand sketch. Excess metal is squeezed out along the parting line to form a flash around the periphery of the cavity. Uh, we're here in impression die hammer forging. So, the material cools rapidly, increasing in strength, and by resisting deformation, effectively blocks the formation of additional flash. Flashless forging, sorry, typo, uh, also called as true close die forging, the metal is deformed in a cavity that provides a total confinement. Most conventional forgings are impression die with flash. They produce in and they produced in dies with a series of cavities where one or more blows of the hammer are used for each step in the sequence. The first impression of often is edging, fullering, and bending. So here, uh, this figure, this is an impression drop forging dies and the product resulting from each impression. The flash is trimmed the flash is trimmed from the finished connecting rod in a separate trimming die. Uh, the sectional view shows that the green flow resulting from the forging process. So, dito, yung flash is yung excess, excess material. So, yun yung trim nila para yung kalabasan yung mismo material. Para kumbaga yun yung sobra. Alternatives to hammer and anvil arrangement. So, two hammers may form a workpiece. Uh, impactors operate with less noise and less vibration. Uh, this diagram is a schematic diagram of an impactor in the striking and returning models. So, dito yung striking and dito yung returning. So, dito, there's the high pressure striking air, impeller, tongue, stop, impeller, high pressure striking air. Dito naman, sa kabila, sa returning naman, low pressure return air, tas ma-open yung exhaust. Tapos yung guide, yung die, tas 4G. Same goes to the other side. Okay. So press forging. Press forging is used for large or thick products. Slow squeezing action penetrates completely through the metal. Produces a more uniform deformation and flow. And longer time of contact between the die and the wood piece. Kasi syempre mas malaki yung metal na if forge mo. Mas matagal yung time para mo forging kasi mas makapal. Dies may be heated. Isothermal forging. Presses are either mechanical or hydraulic. Uh, this means na yung type of press nagagamitin niya is either mechanical or hydraulic. Design of impression die forgings and associated tooling. Forging dies are typically made of high alloy or tool steel. Uh, these are the rules for better and more economical parts. Dies should part along a single flat plane or follow the contour of the part. Parting surface should be a plane through the center of the forging. Adequate craft. Generous fillets and radai. Ribs should be low and wide. Various cross sections should be balanced. Full advantage should be taken of fiber flow lines. And lastly, dimensional tolerances should not be closer than necessary.
Compression die forgings. This uh, picture depicts a forge in a machine automobile engine crankshaft. Forged steel crankshaft provides superior performance compared to those ductile cast iron. So, important design details. Uh, number of intermediate steps, shape of each step, amount of excess metal to fill the die, dimensions of flash at each step, and lastly, good dimension accuracy. Let's move to orbital forging. So, this diagram is a schematic description of orbital forging. So, dito yung rotation axis, dito naman yung die axis, tas magro-rotate siya with either clockwise or counterclockwise, tas magagalaw yung upper die, yung work piece, tas yung lower die. So, dito naman yung unit sa, ano, kapag titignan mo siya top view. Uh, ito yung contact area niya, or this yung work piece. In an upset requiring stop, the stop length greater than three times the diameter of the bar, and where the diameter of the cavity is more is not more than one times the diameter of the bar uh, from conditions conditions from the from the second rule, the length of the unsupported metal beyond the face of the die must not exceed the diameter of the bar. Okay, so this is a schematic illustration of the rules governing upset forging. So in the first rule, yung kanina, may kita mo, ito, tama yan. Next naman, mag-apply naman yung rule 2, then yung rule 3, pero meron dito ng violation of rule 1. Kapag na-violate mo yung rule 1, hindi mali yung lalabas na material or product, so medyo tabing ni siya. Tapos, pag na-violate mo pa yung rule 2, mas lalo siya magiging mali yung deformation. Kasi yung rule 3 naman, and so on and so forth. So next, automatic hot forging. Slabs, billet, billets, billets, and blooms can be slid into one end of a room and hot forged ballocks can merge at the other end with every process automated. Uh, this figure is a typical four step sequence that produces per year forging by automatic hot forging. So from the word itself, a different forge. Uh, um, with, with the use of heat. The shredded, the sheared billet or billet is progressively shaped into an upset pancake. Locker forging and finished gear blank. Samples of ferrous parts produced by automatic hot forging at rates between 90 and 180 parts per minute. Okay, so let's talk about roll forging. Round or flat bar stock is reduced in thickness and increased in length to produce such products as axles, tapered levers, and leaf springs. In most cases, there is no flash. The flash is the excess metal. And the oriented structure imparts favorable forging type properties. So if you look at this uh, picture in the left, rolling forging machine in operation, and in the right, rolls from a rolling forging machine of and the various stages in roll forging apart. So, ito yung kalabasan ng process na to. So, in rolling for, for, in forging, typically the whole process, uh, I will explain to you more with the use of a video that I will show to you. Forging means a process by which a piece of metal is plastically deformed from its raw stock to achieve a desired shape. The energy used to produce deformation can be applied by hammers, presses, upsetters, ring rollers. Generally speaking, the tools that contact the raw stock and the control of the energy used are what produce the desired forged shape. The very nature of forging, however, results in significant benefits, including the reduction or elimination of metallic porosity, which in turn can impact everything from your production, inspection, and life cycle costs to application safety and product reliability. Which type of forging machine and process is best suited to your desired part is dependent upon a number of factors. Chief among them are the quantity of forgings to be produced, the size of part being forged, the desired level of dimensional precision, and the type of alloy being forged. Next is 
swaying or sliding. Also called as rotary sway swaying or radial forging, uses external hammering to reduce diameter or reduce tapers one points on round bars or tubes. The dies, located in the center of the apparatus, consists of two blocks of hardened tool steel. They combine to form a central hole that generally has a conical input transitioning to a cylinder. So this is a schematic uh, diagram or picture of a roll for forging process shown in two shapes before. Okay. So this is a picture of swagging. Uh, in the left, a variety of swag parts, some with internal details. Okay. So here naman, in the right, basic components and motions of rotary swagging machine. Basic components and motions of a rotary swagging machine. Uh, note that the cover plate has been removed to reveal the interior workings. Ito yun. yung cover plate para makita yung sa loob. So next is the figure which the tube being reduced in a rotary swagging or swagging machine. Next, and lastly, net shape and near net shape forging. 80% of the cost of a forged part can be due to the post-forging operations. To minimize the expense and the waste, parts should be forged as close to the final shape as possible. These processes are known as net shape or precision forging. From the word precision, so dapat yung metal na gagamitin mo to produce the forged material should be as close to the size and shape of the product that you want to make. This is the continuation for chapter 16, uh, extrusion. Uh, extrusion. It is a process wherein metal is com compressed and forced to flow through a suitable shaped die to form as product with reduced but constant cross section. Um, so, extrusion, parang, ganito po yung tuna niya. Ngayon, kung iisipin mo siya na parang laruan, uh, parang ganito siya sa laruan. Ngayon, sa, um, Although extrusion may be performed either hot or cold, hot extrusion is commonly employed for many metals to reduce the force required, eliminate cold working effects, and reduce the directional properties. Uh, in the case of metals, a common arrangement is to have a heated billet placed inside the confining chamber. Aram advances from one end, causing the billet the first upset and conform to the confining chamber. As the ram continues to advance, the pressure builds until the material flows plastically through the type and extrude. Uh, uh, extrusion methods. Uh, there are two methods, direct extrusion and indirect extrusion. In direct, in direct extrusion, solid ram drives the entire bullet uh, Solid ram drives the entire bullet to and through a stationary, stationary drive and must provide power to overcome friction. Uh, doon naman po sa indirect extrusion, a hollow ram pushes the die back through a stationary and confined belt. So, ito po yung parang picture ng direct extrusion. Parang ganyan. Pinupush po siya ng pala doon. Tapos yung indirect. Yan. <laughs> Commonly extruded metals. Uh, um, commonly extruded metals is aluminum, magnesium, copper, lead, and alloy of these metals. Uh, taking a, kaya po siya kinagamit para matake advantage of the relatively low yield strength and low hot working temperatures. Yeah. Ito pa yung mga itsura ng mga commonly extruded metals. Yan, yeah, aluminum. Okay, yan. Yeah. Steels. Difficult metals to exclude, which is steel, stainless steel, nickel, nickel-based alloy, titanium, uh, because of their high heel, high heel strength are high, uh, and the metal tends to to weld to the wall of the diamond confining chamber under the required condition of temperature and pressure. 
Uh, advantages of extrusion, uh, many shapes can be produced that are not possible with rolling. No drop is required. Amount of reduction in a single step is only limited by the equipment, not the material or the design. Dies, dies are relatively inexpensive. Small quantities of a desired shape can be produced economically. The diagram of the ram versus ram force versus ram position. Uh, this is for both direct and indirect extrusion of the same product. Mm. So you yeah. <laughs> forces in extrusion, uh, lubrication to reduce friction and act act as a barrier to heat transfer at all stages of the process. Uh, metal flow in extrusion. Flow can be complex, surface cracks, interior cracks, and flow-related cracks need to be monitored. Process control is important. Extrusion of hollow shapes. Mandrel may, mandrels may be used to produce hollow shapes or shape cavities. example of mandrel. This is your first step. Your second step. It's a example. Hydrostatic extrusion. Uh, a high pressure fluid surrounds the workpiece and applies applies the force to execute extrusion. Uh, Billet bil, bil, chamber, chamber friction is eliminated. It is a high efficient process. Uh, temperatures are limited because the fluid acts as a heat sink. Seals, seals must be designed to keep the fluid from leaking. Uh, Another is continuous extrusion, conform process. Continuous feedstock is fed into a groove wheel and is dried by surface friction into a chamber created by a mating die segment. The material upsets to conform to the chamber. Feedstock can be solid, metal powder, punch outs, or chips. Metallic and non metallic powder can be intimate, intimately mixed. Uh, wire, rod, and tube drawing. Reduce the cross, introduce the cross section of a material by folding it through a die. Uh, it is similar to ex extrusion, but force is tensile. Uh, tube drawing is a tube sinking, uh, a tube sinking that that does not use a mandrel. Uh, its internal diameter precision is sacrificed for cost and a floating plug is used. Cold forming and cold forging and impact for extrusion. Slug of materials are squeezed into are extruded from shaped die cavities to produce finished products, finished parts of precise shape and size. Cold heating is a form of upset forging. Uh, Forging. It is used to make the enlarged section on the ends of the rod or wire. Uh, example given is head of nails or bolts and a metal In the impact explosion, a metal slug is positioned in a die cavity where it is struck by a single blow. Metal may flow forward, backward, or some combination. The the punch controls the punch controls the inside shape while the die controls the exterior shape. Uh, the example of cold extrusion uh, is the reverse and the forward and the combined forms of cold extrusion. Uh, so this picture from uh, from the right uh, it is the steps in the in forming of a ball by cold extrusion. So, ito po yung simula. You. Cold heating and thread rolling. Yung gamit. Cold forming sequence involving cut off, squaring, to extrusion, an offset, and a trimming operation. Also shown are the finished part and the trim scrap. So, ito yung itsura ng cut off. Tapos, ito yung square, square end. Ito yung size to extrusion. Ito yung upset. Tapos, yun. Piercing. It is a thick hole 
seam, seamless tubing can be made by rotary piercing. Uh, heated fillet is fed into the gap between two large convex tapered tape rows. Forces, forces, it is, it forces, forces the billet to deform into a rotating ellipse. Uh, another squeezing processes is roll extrusion, sizing, preventing, and staking. Roll extrusion is a uh, thin wall cylinders are produced from thicker wall cylinders. Sizing is involved. Involved. It is. It involves squeezing all or select. Select region of products to achieve a thickness or enhance dimensional precision. Uh, in rebating, it is permanently joins sheets or plates of material by forming an ex expanded head, head on the shank and on the passenger. Uh, in staking, it permanently joins parts together when a segment of one part protrudes through a hole in the, in the other. The roll extrusion process. Uh, is, the roll extrusion process is uh, is with the internal rollers expanding the inner diameter. So yun. Uh, ito naman po yung sa with external rollers reducing the outer diameter. Tapos coning process. Coning. It is called sequest called sequencing of metal while all of the surface are confined within a set of dies. So, uh, hobby. Uh, plastically forms resist cavities in a workpiece. Surface improved by the formation process. Uh, the form deformation processes can be used to improve or alter the surfaces of the metal. PNA is a mechanical working of surfaces by repeated, repeated blows of a well shot or a round nose tool. Burnish, burnishing, uh, rubbing a smooth or, or hard object under, under pressure over the minute surface irregular. irregular. Rolling burnishing, uh, it is used to improve the size and finish of internal and external cylindrical economic conical surfaces. Um, the, su the summary of chapter 16, uh, there are a variety of bulk deformation process. Uh, the main processes are rolling, forging, extrusion, and drawing. Uh, each of these processes has a limits and advantages as to its capabilities. Uh, uh, determining the correct process depends on the desired shape, surface finish, and quantity. 